I am Sandy the Kentucky Crafter. Welcome back to my channel. So today I am playing with a new product that I've never played with before. It is called Craft Tex. Now this isn't a new product. Um, a lot of people have, have used it. I just never had played with it before. And I thought I would give it a try. I ordered it off of Amazon and it came in this big roll here. You can see, um, does it have the dimensions on here? It's pretty long. Um, I'll put that down in the description box below. But it's actually a, um, it's a substitute for fabric, leather, or vinyl. It's actually a paper, but it is really, really, really durable. You can't tear it, like it's impossible to tear it. Um, they recommend you use like a rotary cutter or some really good uh, fabric scissors, um, something like that to cut it. Um, and you can sew on it. You can use it um, on a sewing machine. You can also print on it. It will go through um, most printers. You can paint on it, ink on it. Um, all sorts. You can emboss on it. So there's tons and tons of things you can do. You um, And the glues that they recommend that you use with this are uh, Fabri-Tac, um, Aileen's Tacky Glue, uh, Beacon Zip Dry, and a 3M Super 77 glue. Uh, so I'll probably be using my Fabri-Tac glue with this. Um, so I'm going to play around and it comes in a bunch of different colors. They have these designer colors and then you have your basic colors and vintage colors and then they do have sampler packs as well. Um, and the basic colors, um, they, they come with, they call it unwashed. So it's, it's somewhat smooth, you know, it's a little kind of a little um, has some texture on this side and this side it's it's a little bit smoother but then the vintage side are pre-washed so they go ahead and wash them um, ahead of time and so it looks much more wrinkled you can't really see it in these photos but if you go online you can kind of see it's definitely much more wrinkled and things like that now you can take the pre-washed and wash it yourself and it'll kind of get a uh, wrinkly uh, ap ap uh, appearance. And so what a lot of people do is they will wash it and then they'll ink it and paint it to make it look like leather. So this is a vegan substitute for leather. Um, so it's pretty interesting. I'm still kind of learning about it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with making um, a cover out of this. And I got to decide, I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do some painting on it or some inking, some stenciling, something. Um, but I'm going to play around with a piece first and I kind of get to see, you know, the feel for it and see what sticks, what doesn't stick to it. Um, and see what products that I have um, that will work best with it. So I'm excited to kind of take you all along um, and check this out. All right, I'm playing around with this craft text. And what I've done so far is over on this side, I have sprayed it with um, this Distress Ice spruce iced spruce from Tim Holtz so that's this color here it's kind of like a gray blue and underneath that along the edges I had tried blending um, with this peeled paint and also with this bundled sage and the blending worked out nicely um, it would I think gonna take a lot of blending to really get the white out of it. Um, so I'm not sure if the blending and the ink is the best. And then over on this side, I tried, I had this um, Waverly chalk paint in moss, and that's what I painted here. And I like, I like that. 
I think I'd need another coat because I have some white spots here. And then I was playing around because as you know with the Distress inks that they are reactive to water. And I was concerned that you know you rub your fingers across it and you're going to get ink on your hands. So I put um, some gesso here. I'm going to let that dry. And here I did some modeling paste right here. And then up in this corner right here, I did some heavy gel matte medium. So I'm going to let those dry and see. I might need to get a new one of these because it was, it was pretty pretty dry so I'm not sure if that's going to work or not and then this is the gesso that I used down in this corner and then I took some stencils that I had and I went over <clears throat> this um, iced spruce and also this moss paint with the um, modeling paste and so I'm going to let those dry and kind of see what everything looks like once everything's dry and if I, once I start manipulating it and folding it, what happens to this? Does it crack or break or anything like that? So that's kind of my experimenting so far. Um, I really like the stencil effect over the paints. The other thought I had was I could, I could just spray it or paint it. And then I could decorate it with papers and lace and things like that on top. So kind of build up a layered effect. Um, so that might be something that I play around with over in this corner. So well, that's the progress thus far. Um, but so far, I mean, this stuff goes on very easily. Um, like I said, I might need a second coat of the, of the green here in some of the spots, um, but it seems to apply. And, you know, I'm, I've been bending it, like you can see that right there, and it doesn't seem to be cracking. Um, and same over here, it's still really flexible. Um, so, so far I'm liking it. I'm just trying to learn how to play with it and manipulate it and try to make it look somewhat pretty. I've done a little more playing around with this Craftex and I picked up a couple new paint colors. So this is the Sage Shadow here and then the Shale Green is this color over here. And um, I think I'm going to be using this craft text on this journal that I made, my winter journal, and I've already sewn it in. So I have this, this piece over here ready to go. Um, so when I held this up, I mean, really, any of these colors kind of looked nice with my signature. So I'm excited about that. Um, I thought that this blue spruce spray looked pretty nice, um, so I might go with the spray, um, but I really liked this um, this one here, this uh, shale green, which is this over here, um, but I think any of them would work. The other thing I did is I took some sten my stencils again, and I was playing around with inking over um, and these surfaces. So here I did the vintage photo. If you can see that. And then this is um, this color here. I stenciled with um, pine needles. And then this is pine needles also. Um, and this is a, supposed to look like trees in a forest, but you, I don't think that really trans, transfers here well. I think something like that or something like that or even with the berries, branches, or the leaves might be better than this one. Um, and then lastly, I just thought I'd look and see what this shimmer spray, I had this Dilutions Shimmer Spray, what it looks like if you spray it on here. And you probably can't pick that on the camera, but 
it does kind of add a nice little, but it's not really the effect I was going for, so I probably won't use it on my journal, but I was just curious to see how it looked on here. Um, the other thing I did is I rounded the corners. You can see that right there. I rounded all four corners, and um, I think that really kind of makes it look more like a, a book cover. Um, and the other thing that I did was that I was, I crinkled it up just to see kind of how that effect, what it looks like. So you can kind of tell, like here I've crumpled up this corner. So it looks a little bit more worn than up here where I haven't done any of the crinkling. And to be honest, I kind of like it. Um, not crinkled here. I, I, I kind of crumpled this up. Um, so I, I might just leave it not crumpled. I haven't decided for this first one, but I do want to play around with that more. Um, but I really like how like this feels in my hand, you know, um, putting, putting the signatures. Now this won't be the cover that I use, but look how nice that looks. I think that looks really nice. And I can, you know, score this here, um, and it'll be a. I'm gonna glue this in like this, so I think that'll be a nice, soft kind of a soft spine journal. And all right, so I think I'm kind of done playing for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the actual cover. Um, I'll probably place some more on this side. Um, but for my actual journal cover, I'm thinking I might put um, paper or fabric on the inside. I haven't decided yet. Um, I have done a little bit more playing around, so I kind of wanted to show you that. Um, so I did um, check out it's sewing on the sewing machine. And it sewed very easily, so I think that'll be fun. I think I'm going to sew all the way around the edge of the journal cover for my my winter journal. Um, the other thing I think that is neat is that this um, gel matte medium, the longer it sat here, the color um, uh, underneath from the um, Distress spray, oxide spray, kind of change this from white to that iced spruce color. So I think that's a really neat effect as well. Because you can see here with the paint, this is still white. Let me adjust the lighting here. That's a little bit better. Um, the other thing I did is I did some scoring, um, so you can see that, so I just got my scoreboard out, and I scored it to where it, you know, would look more like a book, and it scored very easily, so I think that's a really nice feature, and then I wanted to play around this side, I think I mentioned, is smoother than this side, and so I wanted to see kind of what it looked like on this side, and this color here, it was another oxide. It was, pardon the reach, it was this pine needles and the um, distressed oxide spray. So I sprayed it on this side and kind of rubbed it with a, with a, um, one of these little sponges here and kind of rubbed it on and it gives it more of a, a suede a suede look which I think I guess if you're wanting to go with a, a faux leather look it's maybe this side of the craft text that you would want to use and then I was playing around and I added on some vintage photo I just kind of rubbed it on like this with the vintage photo just to kind of see what it would look like and this is that crumpled area the area that I had crumpled um, on this side and I think uh, I'm going to play around with this some more but I think this would 
really kind of give it that leather leather look and i kind of like the green in the background because it kind of gives it that old old age look but it would be fun to try it with just the vintage photo maybe i'll try that over here let's see what it looks like my vintage photo is i think getting worn out i might have to get a reinker And I also have this walnut stain. I might try that as well. Around the edges. I might have to try um, spraying, doing the distress oxide spray because you can see here with putting the inks on you still see a lot of the white underneath um, I wonder if I did a baby wipe what that would look like let me know um, what you think of this craft text really intrigued by it. See, it just kind of spreads it around a little bit more. Hmm. I think there's possibility there. interesting I think having the spray I feel like the spray um, or paint goes on a little bit better than the um, ink pad with the sponge because you still see a lot of the white craft text behind there or maybe if I got um, the brown or the beige craft text you know it might look more leather like so, so just kind of wanted to show you the last little bits of my experimenting and my playing. Um, I, I haven't really decided if I'm gonna, I think if I'm gonna put a coat over this iced spruce, I think I'm gonna go with the clear gesso and that's in this corner down here. Because even with the matte Mod Podge, I don't really, I, use, I think you can see it too much and I don't like that. And this is the shiny Mod Podge. So, and then this is that um, modeling paste, which is way too thick. I don't really like that. And, or no, that was the, yeah. And then this was um, the matte medium, I think, or vice versa. Um, I'd have to get the jars back out. So if I think if I, but you know, I kind of, I'm rubbing my fingers over and none of this iced spruce is really coming off my fingers. This is kind of from the other side over here where I was just playing around. So I don't even know if I need to do a cover over of gesso over the iced spruce once it's dried. Um, but we'll kind of see as I, I learn about it and use it a little bit more. So yeah, so that's how it's coming along so far. Um, thanks for coming along with me. Um, let me know what you think of this craft tax, if you've ever used it. Um, if you haven't used it, um, then you might want to give it a try. Um, it's, it's kind of a neat alternative for a softer journal. Now, I know you could just use, um, uh, help me out here, you know, envelopes and packages, things like that, um, and cover them with paper, but, you know, that's, that's probably still the best option, but I just thought this was kind of fun to play around with, so I might try to go with some leather looking techniques on this side and see how that turns out. But as always, thank you all so much for watching. And thank you so much to all my subscribers. Um, I appreciate you all um, more than.
than you know. And I love you all so much. So I will see you all on the next video. Bye.